Hello friends, your boy Jeff back here with you, making two videos today. Unusual, I know. I have the week off, so I've been able to um, play more records than I have been recently. And enjoying them quite a lot, so i got ten here to show you. Ten, not five, ten. And um, yeah, the, the last one I just finished playing just now, so um, let's get right to it. This is going back probably the last two weeks-ish. Uh, this one I picked up, geez, on an estate sale last summer. Soundtrack for the movie called The Idol Maker. Uh, I think when I showed this initially, um, I mentioned that this movie was in heavy rotation in on uh, cable TV when I first got cable back in like the early 80s. Because this came out in what, like 1981, something like that. And um, the music is catchy and it's stuck in my head for whatever reason. So when I happened to find this at an estate sale and it was only $2, I couldn't resist. So uh, a very young uh, Peter Gallagher there and Ray Sharkey who you might remember from the show Wise Guy, which was a classic cop show in the mid-80s. But uh, yeah, good music, very pleasant to listen to. Haven't seen the movie in like 30 years. Don't intend to, but I enjoyed this. <laughs> <clears throat> Next, another um, album I'd found probably in the last two months, Run For Your Life by the Tony Spencer Band. They had a minor hit with the song No Time to Lose. Um, no Time to Lose is one of those songs that you... Th it got radio airplay, and or at least it did around in my area back in like the 80s. This is another early 80s or late 70s um, refugee. Sorry, 1979 vintage. And... Um, it's one of those songs you always heard on the radio. You assumed it was a hit, only to find out later on that it really wasn't. <laughs> that was the power of radio back then, when DJs could play kind of what they wanted to instead of what they were told all the time. You don't get that anymore these days, which is a shame. Bought this album on the strength of that single. It kind of goes against my policy anymore because I just purged my collection of about maybe 20 or 30 albums and a lot of them were albums that I only had because of one or two songs so but I bought this before I started instituting that rule <laughs> so I'm going to keep this one for a while anyway the rest of the album was pretty good um I can't lie it's not as super memorable as No Time to Lose but you know if I gave this a couple more spins which I probably might it could probably grow on me. Then we have a reissue of one of my most wanted albums here over the probably the last year or two. Uh, just came out, just got reissued on vinyl. PJ Harvey's To Bring You My Love. This is the album. Uh, this originally came out in 1995. So it's uh, celebrating its 25th anniversary this year. This is the album where I discovered P.J. Harvey because uh, the song Down by the Water got heavy rotation airplay on the radio, on the alternative station that I was listening to back then. Um, so that led me to want to check out more of her music. I uh, never owned a copy of this album before now. Um, I just kind of... Um, that was... That was even before the age of like downloading music and Napster. So <clears throat> I um, kept my ear out for anything that she put out. And I eventually started downloading some of her music in like the early 2000s. And then I eventually got this album digitally. But I'm very glad to have it on vinyl. It also came with a download card with a higher resolution digital file, which I downloaded and put on my iPod. So... Probably this album, along with uh, Stories from the City, Stories from the Sea, are probably my two favorite P.J. Harvey albums. 
you know, they're the most, um, here's the back cover, most cohesive as an album. The songs just seem to all flow together and all the songs are really, really good, especially on this album. So I think if you were going to pick just like one or even maybe only two PJ Harvey albums out of all of them, I'd probably say this would be your best bet. Um, but me, I like just about everything she's done. I mean, early on in her career, like her first two albums, and even to a lesser degree, this one, are very raw, very hard, very guitar, loud guitar-driven rock. Um, but she does, she uses her voice a little more um, creatively than a lot of other female singers. Like she can hit the high notes, but then she can also do the down and dirty, you know, almost bluesy type of uh, yell. So... She can play a wide range with her voice, which I like because too many female singers are just one note type singers. But PJ Harvey is definitely not that. She is a, to me, she's a, a very interesting artist and I've always liked her. So very glad to have this on vinyl. Um, they've been doing like about one of these a month, I think, reissuing. So as uh, the holes in my collection come up and these get um, announced for pre-order and reissue, I'm there because I'm going to have a them here eventually. From there, we go to the Isley's Greatest Hits. This was an album from the neighbor hall that I got. Of course, when I saw it, I couldn't resist on the T-neck label. And of course, uh, they cover, they do some interesting covers on this one. They cover Spill the Wine, which is uh, kind of interesting. They do Love the One You're With, Freedom. Um, yeah, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty interesting. And of course, uh, It's Your Thing is on this one. Shout is on this one. You know, I love the Isley Brothers. So having a greatest hit set by them is a slam dunk for Jeffy. Now, probably the most pleasant surprise out of all the records I'm going to show you is Bob Dylan's Rough and Rowdy Ways. This is his brand new album, just as was released recently, and my wife bought this for me, I'll be honest. I was thinking about getting it, I was kind of on the fence, I was like, yeah, I don't know, whatever, you know, because his voice, you know, I thought was kind of shot. Here's the back cover. Murder Most Foul is, uh, was the single, the lead release off of this uh, album in advance of the whole album. And it takes up all of uh, side four. But um, didn't quite know what to expect with this one. I'd heard a lot of people uh, praising it, you know. But I have to say, in all honesty, this is a great album. It's very... It's very bluesy in, in a very shuffle, slow shuffle kind of way. Dylan's voice is ragged, um, but he doesn't uh, try to strain and hit notes that he can't hit anymore. So I think it's an it's a example of a man knowing his limitations and working within those limitations to his best um, benefit. And he delivers on this record. This is a great record. Um, what song on here stood out to me? Besides Murder Most Foul, which is just an epic, um, just an epic song about the Kennedy assassination. And, and it's like, it's like history put to music. Um, the song uh, Black Rider, I really, really like that one was a standout for me. I'd have to, uh, I'd have to look at the track list here. Oh, here's the gatefold. I'll show you the gatefold while I have it out of the bag. There's that. Um, False Prophet was also a great song. Black Rider, like I said. I Contain Multitudes. Just about every song on this album was a winner for me. I don't think there was one that I really didn't like. But yeah, the music itself, it's, it's a slow, slow blues. Kind of like a slow burn on a lot of these tunes. So... Um, you know, like I said, Dylan's voice is on the rougher side, but it works. He makes it work. <laughs> That's all I can say. And 
I mean, the guy's like 80 years old now, right? And he's putting out an album of, you know, of this kind of quality. It's pretty unbelievable. So, um, this is, yeah, easily the biggest surprise out of the, the stack of records that I'm showing here in this video. Bob Dylan's Rough and Rowdy Ways. I really love this one. And this, um, this came on the download card too. I put it on my iPod and I'd already played it while I was driving around. And it makes for, it makes for good driving music, I gotta say. <laughs> way to go Bob by the way I'm in the middle of listening to his uh, bootleg series volumes 1 to 3 it was a big 5 record box set I just played record number 3 today so that will show up on the next spin zone I figured I'd I gotta finish it before I can talk about it or show it so I've been doing uh, I've been uh, listening to a lot of Dylan lately <laughs> to say the least my friend Emma, who is the resident cheap trick expert and fan, sent this to me as VCLT. This is their 1979 album, Dream Police. And of course, I keep the notes with, uh, with the record when I, when I get them as VCLT. Um, <clears throat> this one is another winner. I actually like this record about, I would put it probably on the same level as their debut, their self-titled debut. Um, Gonna Raise Hell, fantastic track. Let me get my glasses. There were a couple other standouts besides the title track, Dream Police, which everybody knows. That's a great song. Uh, Gonna Raise Hell, love that one. Oh, Need Your Love. Basically, Gonna Raise Hell was the final track on side one. Need Your Love was the final track on side two. Both of those are epic rock songs. Just epic. <clears throat> so... I have to say, uh, the more I listen to these guys, the more I'm really liking them. And uh, Emma's given me several cheap tricks, and all of them I've been really enjoyable, I have to say. Especially these early albums, you know, like from the 70s. Uh, also picked up uh, late, um, an R their RSD um, Black Friday from last year, their RSD release, the... Uh, New Year's Eve 79 concert called Are You Ready? That will probably show up on the next Spin Zone as well. I'll probably listen to that maybe tomorrow. But um, yeah, this is an album you just put on and you just crank it. Because <laughs> it, it rocks, it jams, it's it's awesome. It's power pop. It's um, I can just imagine when this came out in 79, you know, 79 was probably the, the biggest year for disco. And then you get a, a, a shot of loud, guitar-driven rock like this. Just had to be a nice jolt to the system on the radio airwaves and amongst all the disco. And I like disco, don't get me wrong. But sometimes I think about these records in the context of the time they were released. And uh, I have to say, this probably went down really well with rock fans. Dream Police by Cheap Trick. That was a great one. Now, <clears throat> the first record that I played when I started my a little vacation is one that uh, I'd been waiting to play so I could listen to it all in one shot because it's a triple album. Triple albums take a bit of time to listen to. But let me tell you, this was uh, released earlier this year. It's by Rory Gallagher. It's a live album called Check Shirt Wizard. It's from a concert in 1977 and man let me tell you this record kicks ass i'll just hopefully you can see the uh, track list there uh this came out around the time i think of his calling calling card album i'm not quite sure but um unbelievable guitar unbelievable music unbelievable backing band this, I mean, when I, when you hear this records like this, you, it makes you wonder why wasn't he a bigger star? Why wasn't Rory Gallagher? I mean, he kind of is recognized as a guitar guy these days, but in his prime, like when this was recorded, he should have been, you know, he should have been on the same level as like Clapton and Jimmy Page and you know guys like that, superstars 
Roy Gallagher should have been a superstar. Why he wasn't, I'll never know. But man, listening to this record is unbelievable. I mean, the guitar is, it's fucking awesome. <laughs> I, I don't have any other better words to say. <laughs> um, side four, or I should say side D, uh, he does do a, um, an acoustic set in the middle of all of the electric music. So um, too much alcohol, going to my hometown, I think those showed up like on the Rory Gallagher live disc, but these versions are awesome as well. So, yeah, if um, this, uh, I won this from uh, my buddy Brad's contest back in like March. And I used uh, the winnings from that contest to buy this, but I'd saved it till now. So I could, so I had a, a time where I could listen to it straight through and it was awesome. Highly recommended. If you like blues rock, electric blues rock, even British blues, I know I already told you about this, Emma. you got to get this record. It is fucking fantastic. Roy Gallagher, Check Shirt Wizard. Does not disappoint. Without a doubt. Okay, a couple more to go here. Sticking with the blues rock guitar heroes, we have Lonnie Mack, Strike Like Lightning. This was his... Uh, First album on Alligator Records. Kind of a comeback album for him. Produced by Stevie Ray Vaughan, as you can see there. And Stevie also plays on this uh, album, too. And you can definitely tell when he uh, takes over. And actually, I think he, sing he sings on one of the tracks. I think he sings on... Uh... <sighs> Which one? I can't remember. Oh, if, uh, if you have to know. Sorry, if you have to know. That's the track. He also sings on it and plays. Unbelievable. I mean, Lonnie Mac was a guitar hero back in the 60s. I showed uh, a live album of his that I picked up a couple months back. Raved about that one. This album, this is a studio album, almost just as good. Almost just as good. It's very high-energy electric blues guitar. So if that's for you, if that's what you like, and of course I love that kind of stuff, you know I do. Plus, with some uh, guest work by the great Stevie Ray Vaughan, then I would recommend you pick up this album, because I really liked it. Really liked it. And um, I, also, I, I also saved this one for when I could really turn it up and enjoy it too. <laughs> so my speakers have been getting a workout lately. Uh, Lonnie Mac, Strike Like Lightning. This one is another winner. Then, yesterday, let me take a drink. Yesterday, I went to Dusty Groove Records in the city here in Chicago. Picked up five albums. I'll show those at a later date. They'll probably show up on, on the Spin Zone soon. But <clears throat> this one I played yesterday. Uh, Dusty Groove is a great record store. And um, I had to make an appointment, actually, to go shopping there. So uh, yesterday morning, about 10.30, I went there, and they only allowed me in for like 30 minutes. So slightly rushed, but I saw this album in the front of one of the bins. It's by Bird Chanch, called Lucky 13. And of course, again, not to keep bringing you up, Emma, saw this, immediately thought of you, so I just bought it without even thinking about it. Figuring if... You already had it. I would gladly keep it because um, I'm becoming a Burt Janch fan too. I have uh, the Birthday Blues album. Loved that album. And I just saw this. Didn't know anything about it. Um, and it turns out that this is a um, compilation of songs from his first two albums in like the mid-60s. Fantastic guitar work. Fantastic acoustic guitar work. Very much along the lines of birthday blues. Um, some of these some of these songs are just instrumental. It's just him playing guitar, and but most of them have vocals, and they have that famous Burt Janch haunting vocal sound. His voice is it's like ethereal, it's a slightly creepy, and it's just powerful. You know, it draws you in, and the way he plays guitar. 
even on acoustic guitar, he plays with passion and intensity. And his style, it's, it's haunting. It's kind of hypnotic. And it, it draws you in, or at least it drew me in. So I uh, brought this home yesterday. I cleaned it. And I play tested it and I um, was kind of in the middle of doing like other little light chores. So I, I was just kind of like listening to this at first in the background. But man, after about the middle of the first song, I just came back into the room and I just ended up sitting down and listening to it straight through. <laughs> so it turns out Emma does have this album, she told me. So I'm gladly keeping this. And um, yeah, Bert Janch, Lucky 13. This is a great album it would probably be a great uh primer on his early music if you were interested in it you know acoustic folky bluesy like i said um haunting is just the the main adjective that comes to mind when i think of his music i just love his style of playing and um yeah i'm gonna have to start keeping an eye out for his albums too now thanks emma <laughs> i'm kidding i'm kidding I love it. <clears throat> All right, last but not least, just played this one before I uh, started making this video. Uh, the Birds, Sweetheart of the Rodeo. This was VCLT from Mazzy from like late last year, I think. Um, yeah, it's been a crate resident for most of this year, but I um, I put on Instagram that that this was like country rock, but it's really more country than rock. It's pretty much a straight up country album. I mean, it's not uh, it's not that slow boot scootin' boogie crap that I don't like. I mean, a lot of the songs have a good pace to them. They're not like real draggy or slow. And the vocals are great, you know, from Roger McGuinn and company. I ended up liking this album more than I thought I would. To be honest. <laughs> because I've I've heard people talk about this album and say, you know, that it's an important record because it's sh you know it, it showcases like a, the big shift in music. It was like one of the precursors, you know, these guys along with Dylan going into country music in like the late '60s, early '70s, and and sort of ushering in like the singer songwriter movement. But a lot of people said that it's not their favorite Birds album. Um. This is the only Birds album I own currently, so <laughs> right now it's my favorite because it's the only one I've got. But uh, compared to like their earlier um, mid-60s hits, probably doesn't measure up. I mean, if you're a bigger fan of country music, this would probably go down a lot easier. Me, I liked it. Yeah, I mean, it was okay. Some of the songs were pretty peppy. I kind of dug it, but overall it was just okay. <laughs> but thank you very much for sending this to me, Mazzy. You're the best. Um, it was an enjoyable listen. I'm keeping it. I'm not going to purge this anytime soon, so don't worry. But uh, yeah, I, I kind of get what people were saying when they uh, they recognize the they recognize the importance of the album, but it may not be their favorite. There's some records out there that are like that, right? That's kind of what it is for me. But I still liked it. Don't get me wrong. All right. 23 and a half minutes gonna wrap it up here thank you all for watching thank you all for uh commenting for those of you who comment i love it and uh yeah i'm gonna keep spinning uh i don't go back to work until uh early next week so i'm just gonna keep on spinning gonna play the rest of that dylan set and whatever else i decide to play so till next time it's your boy jeff peace and i'll see you next time